Hi everyone, my name's Drew and welcome to Vintage Watch Shopping in Geneva. I am a watch enthusiast, certainly not an expert, but a hobbyist collector. And about a year ago, I was coming to Geneva and was searching around YouTube and the internet generally, looking for advice about used and vintage watch shops in Geneva. And all I could find was some suggestions buried in the forums. And I thought um, there should probably be an easier, more accessible way to get this information. So I thought perhaps I would make a YouTube video sharing what my experiences have been at different stores around Geneva. So welcome and let's have a look around. If you're watching this video, you already know that Geneva is really the headquarters of the watchmaking universe. As such, the city offers authorized dealers for almost every brand imaginable. So in this video, I'm going to focus more on the used and vintage market because you can find the authorized dealers just by Googling them. So the first stop on our tour will be Ponti. I think Ponti might be my favorite, largely because they have a big collection. They've been delightful when I've stopped in. They've spent a lot of time with me, allowed me to try on whatever I wanted, sat with me for almost an hour discussing different models, and I just found the customer service to be great. So looking in the window, you can see they have a pretty good collection of APs. Got the Tech Nautilus back there, and a really big variety of Rolex sports models and they probably have two times as many inside the shop as well. I was in Ponti yesterday, but when I came back today to film this, they were closed unfortunately, but there are the hours in case you want to come by. I wouldn't expect to find any deals here per se, but if you're looking for something special, they really have, I think, the largest variety that I've found in Geneva. So around the corner from Ponti is the beautiful watch. It looks as though you can probably review their entire collection at thebeautifulwatch.com. This store has a much smaller collection, but also a number of very beautiful pieces. When I stopped in earlier, I asked if their entire collection was in the window, and they said, by and large, yes. So if the store is closed, you can still get a sense of what they have just by window shopping. Sorry for the glare. After heading directly uphill from the beautiful watch, you'll end up at Roy and Sasha Davidoff. The Davidoff brothers are well known in the Geneva watch world. They have a really substantial collection of vintage and quite special Rolexes in particular, but uh, some other offerings as well. When I was in there yesterday, they said that they were kind of reorganizing their collection. It was a bit smaller than usual, but they were a delight to chat with. I sat in there for an hour with them discussing their specialties, what interesting watches they had on offer currently, and there was no pressure whatsoever to buy anything. I just found them really interesting folks to chat with. So definitely stop by the Davidoff Brothers shop. Note that there is another Davidoff in Geneva, Davidoff of Geneva, which is not a watch store, but rather a tobacco and spirits shop. So don't go there unless you need tobacco or spirits. Across the street and slightly downhill from the Davidoff Brothers shop is MBNF. It's a bit of an unusual place. It's not exactly a watch store, more of a 
horological art gallery uh, filled with kinetic sculptures, watch-related art, and some very unusual timepieces. Uh, as long as you're at the Davidoff Brothers, it's definitely worth uh, dropping in just to see um, what can be done with timekeeping and movement that is not necessarily uh, a watch or a clock. The last stop on our tour is Watch Attitude, which is located about a 10 minute walk from the first three shops. They have a pretty good selection, almost as large as Ponty, and they're up for negotiating the prices. So I've seen deals here that I thought were not unreasonable. Um, the woman who owns it is a, a pleasure to sit and chat with. She entertained me for about an hour again uh, without any pressure to buy anything. Um, so, have a stop here on your, on your tour of Geneva. So those are the shops that I've found after a couple of visits to Geneva. I'm sure it's not an exhaustive list as I'm just a visitor. Uh, there's probably other things that I haven't learned about yet, um, but this will get you a good start uh, on a first watch shopping tour of Geneva. While you're in Geneva, you could also stop at the Patek Museum and an Omega Museum. People seem to really enjoy these. Watch museums aren't really my thing, I don't really care for looking at watches through glass cases, but other people seem to really enjoy them, so I'm clearly in the minority here. Um, I've also heard that there are horological tours that you could take. Um, I'm sure they stop at the museums, but probably also some of the headquarters. Maybe you can get an inside look into some watchmaking. Uh, maybe I'll check that out next time. One thing to definitely do in Geneva on a hot day, maybe the best way to spend a hot day is to come out onto the pier or jetty that sticks out into the lake. Uh, there's a lot of room for sunbathing, swimming, other kinds of water sports. Uh, it's just a, a delightful atmosphere and way to spend a day in Geneva. So what is it that I don't like about Geneva? Well, Geneva is obviously a capital of international finance, of watchmaking, of diplomacy and international events, but despite that, or maybe because of that, I find the city to be a bit cold and inaccessible socially. Now, I don't speak French, so that's on me in part, um, but my sister-in-law lived here for many years, and whenever I come and ask her for recommendations, she always struggles a bit to send me a list of things that she thinks I would actually like to do, which I don't think speaks that highly for the city. Um, but despite that, you can't beat the beauty, it's charming, um, and particularly in the summer with the lake, uh, it makes a great kind of family vacation spot. One last recommendation about Geneva. You don't need to really take taxis here. Upon arrival, take the train. It's one stop to downtown. It costs three dollars. It leaves every ten minutes or so and is very fast. And then within this city, there's an excellent mass transit system and your hotel will provide you with uh, a card that allows you to ride it unlimited number of times for free. Um, so save your money uh, for watches, don't pay for travel. Well, that's Geneva. I hope to make more videos like this as I travel quite a bit for work and end up in some interesting places. Um, while in Geneva, even though we didn't focus on ADs, definitely take advantage of their presence, go in, sit down, ask them to try on 20 or 30 watches, play with them, make yourself comfortable, and don't be intimidated by them. Uh, it's a great resource to learn about new watches and just to have a little bit of fun, and then exit without buying anything and head over to the vintage shops. All right, take care and see you next time. Bye. Hi everyone, just one last note. Since recording the footage for this video, I have also recorded footage for watch shopping in Kyoto, in Osaka, in New York City, and in Portland, Oregon. So if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and hit the bell icon so that you know when the new videos arrive. All right, thanks.